So here we have a fragrance that I recently discovered by the brand Al Haramain, and I've reviewed a bunch of their fragrances before. They have one that smells like Creed Aventus. They do have one that smells like Tobacco Vani. They also have one that smells like Bulgari's Tiger. Here we have one called Oud Burma. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this fragrance. Amber, tonka bean, vetiver, spices, lavender. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin today's episode and I give you my thoughts on Oud Burma by Al Haramain, and I give you my thoughts on the smell, the performance, longevity, comparisons, all that good stuff, I do want to start things off by saying that if you're a fan of fragrance related content, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified whenever I do upload future videos to the channel. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or if you took something of value from today's episode. It would really mean a lot to me. So here we have a fragrance that comes across rather warm. There's amber, there's benzoin, there's tonka bean. So you have some sweet ingredients. You have some woodsy notes, a touch of leather, vetiver, cardamom, lavender. So you also have some bright aromatic ingredients, no citrus to speak of, but it seems like you do have a nice density there as it concerns the heart notes and the base notes. So my initial impression after you know trying this one for the very first time was that this is gonna be a fragrance that lasts a long time, perhaps not as much of an evolution, but one that is gonna be pretty resilient on the skin, one that's gonna last a long time. So I'll give you my thoughts regarding the performance, which includes the projection and the longevity alongside the smell. But let's go ahead and start things off with a quick look at the presentation. Now, once this fragrance opens, you are going to get a spicy warmth. Those are the two elements, a spiciness and a warmth. You are going to get both of those right in the opening of this fragrance. The spiciness, of course, is coming from the cardamom. The cardamom is not overly strong in this fragrance. So if you're expecting it to be like super strong, like, you know, chai tea or something like that, that's not what you're going to get, right? This fragrance does have a certain smoothness about it, which I think will be appreciated. Even in terms of the leather, perhaps there's a little bit of saffron in here, kind of melding with the cardamom. So neither one of them are overly strong in the sense that they're overwhelming. You do notice them. Of course, their appearance is loud and clear and you're inevitably going to smell uh, cardamom and a few other spices when you smell this, but it's made smooth on account of the lavender, I think. Now, it's not super youthful, and I say that because in a lot of modern day lavender fragrances, you have a combination of lavender and clary sage, and maybe some other herbal or aromatic ingredients, rosemary being one of them, perhaps even mint, and you don't have that in this fragrance. So it doesn't smell super bright and youthful and office friendly and all that stuff. As a matter of fact, it's actually a bit on the darker side of things, but there was a certain creaminess about it in the, interest, in the opening that was very, very interesting. So I'm getting that amber, the benzoin is warm, and it has that vanillic overtone and the tonka bean is really decadent and sensual. So I truly love those elements and how they sort of come together to create the sort of creamy, waxy sweetness. That's the best way that I can describe it. The spices are there, the woods are not overly strong, and even when it comes to the spices, they're not overbearing, which I think is gonna be a good thing for a lot of people. The lavender is a really nice accent, but it never steals the spotlight. At the end of the day, Oud Burma is a really nice warm, ambery, slightly balsamic, slightly sweet and spicy fragrance. And I really do admire the versatility of it. So I think there's nothing too heavy. There are no rough edges. So even if you're looking at the note breakdown, you're like, well, wait a second with the agarwood and all these other things, the namesake of the perfume, it sounds like it's gonna be a little bit on the darker side of things. As a matter of fact, there's a counterpart to this, which I own as well, and it's called Oud Adam or Oud Adam. And that fragrance kind of smells like Anisio's Oud for Greatness. It also gave me Haltain by Parfum de Marly vibes. So that fragrance is actually much darker, much spicier with that saffron in there. This one, on the other hand, 
is actually a bit smoother, slightly sweeter, slightly cleaner, albeit still spicy and pretty long lasting. And as suspected, there isn't a whole lot of an evolution in this, which I think for some people might be a good thing. What you're gonna get from it six hours into the development is what you also get from it two hours into the development. So it's just some things to consider. All in all, if my description sounds interesting to you, definitely check it out. And it could be found for a really, really good price. Complex, niche quality, fantastic price, beautiful presentation. All the links are gonna be down below not affiliate links, not a sponsored video. I'm not making a penny from you making any purchases, nor am I getting paid anything by the brand. Completely not sponsored, just like discovering new fragrances. And I love covering a little bit of everything on this channel. I think you guys know that by now. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, so the brand Al Haramain does have a reputation for creating fragrances that are twists or clones of more popular fragrances. In this case, I'm not entirely sure if this is a twist or a clone of anything, but I love the way that it smells. I think the smell is great and I think it's long lasting, it's warm, it's great for a cooler day and also great if you're wearing it indoors. It does have a sort of night out appeal to it, but maybe it might lack the playful nature of something like a 1 million by Paco Rabanne or Invictus or something like that. Longevity, 10 plus hours, projection was great for the first hour of application. It radiated within an arm's length. It became an elbow's length scent right around hour six and a half, a skin scent right around hour 10. In terms of the versatility, this one is perfectly unisex in my opinion. Some people might argue that it's a little bit masculine leaning on account of the spices, but I leave it up to you to make that determination. Go with your gut, wear what you want, wear what makes you happy. I think this one is probably a little bit better for the colder weather. Great for formal occasions, I say, because there isn't a simplicity about it that would make it an ideal contender for a casual scenario. And I also think that in terms of age range, because of the spiciness, this will appeal to somebody who's a little bit older. The presentation on this one is gorgeous. I love the way that it opens up. It has the magnetic cap. It's housed in there very comfortably. My final verdict on this fragrance is if you're looking for a warm, ambery, slightly herbal, spicy fragrance, easy to get along with, great longevity, not much of a development, check out Oud Burma by Al Haramain. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit the bell icon so you could be notified whenever I do upload future videos to the channel. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.